Oh. Ah. Hey! Yeah, well, that wasn't a good one, but see, listen, they can't all be great. It's a new thing that Zoom talks out loud to you, right? I it must be. I didn't like that. Okay, I didn't like that either. All right, so folks, pretend we're just starting. Hey, it's episode 27. Of Jesus. Right? That's a lot. That's a lot. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. And I will say that in episode 26, we did. Yeah, we definitely did. We in did. most of the other ones, also, I think we did. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we did last week. Was, Man, we did. We had uh, juicy stuff. Yeah, and I and looking <laughs> and looking at, at uh, this uh, particular set of lyrics, I think we have another great one. I really do. Uh, in just thinking about the conditions under which a man like Billy Joel would write this song, it's <laughs> funny to me because I'm like, well earned case of lyrical bitching, and that's yeah. pretty great. But does it, earned, earned? I think. Earned. Yes, this is third or fourth album. Yeah. Like enough time on the road to be very irritable. <laughs> yes. And also be like kind of a nobody with one or two hits at that point. And at and that point in your career, you've just discovered what pricks studio guys can be. <laughs> right. And you can't believe it. Yeah. How many, how many people already told you? Yep. Like, oh, it's worse than I thought. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and and you're great, but you haven't quite locked in your control. Yes. You are a young pitcher with a wild arm. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I love, we should say that the song is called The Entertainer. Yeah. Which really makes me laugh because there's that other famous song called The Entertainer. <laughs> yeah. That is a very peppy, upbeat song. And is uh, no lyrics, right? There's no lyrics. It was used is from the soundtrack to the Sting. Yeah. Ba, 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 it's about like being a fucking corporate drone and a victim. Yeah, it is about a definitely a specific aspect of being an entertainer for sure. It's the it's the grind. It's the uh, oh, is there going to be a lunch? It's that guy. It's, <laughs> that guy. Oh, is there What's my lunch? per diem? Yeah, it is absolutely that. It's the guy on TV, but he's basic cable. It's you know, when you have to walk to the Denny's from the hotel, but the only place to walk is on the side of the highway. <laughs> so you might die on the way to Denny's. I did a gig, man. I did a gig next to a train track once. And the hotel <laughs> was by a train. And only because it's me, I loved it. I know that no <laughs> other human being would, but it was hilarious to me. And there was this terrible barbecue place right next to it that you could eat at, but was also delicious because they trafficked in fat. Great. But for sure, it was like I had to find a way to the gig from the hotel that they had given me. Uh, there, were, there were perks built in, kind of. And that was the place that was like the hotel we got has a continental breakfast and sometimes continental breakfast is there's a guy making omelets and there's all this right. stuff this one was cereal boxes and uh and a machine you could use to make your own waffle oh okay well that's i've yeah i mean that's medium yep. there's also sometimes it's like a muffin yes <laughs> wrapped in nine layers of cellophane yeah um that is yeah it's more work to get out of the wrapping than it's worth yeah uh, the best yeah so the other thing i like about this song too is musically what's kind of cool is it's um 
I don't know. It feels a little impish to me the way the music works. Yeah, I think there's a lot of sarcasm going on. Yes, for sure. Like the title is sarcastic, I think. Yeah. The music is like, um, here's the the peppy entertainer that you want. Yes. Lyrics are like, here's here's how it I, I feel while I'm playing this. <laughs> yep. For you. And, uh, is it a, a do, is that a piccolo? Is that a flute? What is that? Oh, that thing is a big, I think it's some kind of synthesizer. Yeah, it probably is. I was trying to pick it out. I was like, I don't think it's a flute. I, yeah, no, I, I think it's a, a moog. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's funny is it makes more sense for it to be a synthesizer now that I think of it. It yeah. makes sense for it to be low rank garbagey because that's not, it's not about the delightful flautist and the talented piano player. It's oh. about the meat put out in front of the people to get the tickets and to sell the drinks. Yes. That, yeah. is for okay. sure. that is for sure what that's about. And I've been that guy. I've been the guy I'm like, where I'm like, uh, I guess I could complain about them dropping checks now, but that is why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, I'm like, oh, right. Yeah. Everyone's looking behind the curtain at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like this. I, I just wanted a uh, quick so sojourn. You're going to visit your ma. That's very nice. Yeah. Um, uh, just thinking about, we were talking about it a little, and I was thinking about how much I don't like going to relatives' house only because I'm like, they never eat the kind of breakfast I do anymore. No. Nobody has the right things. Yeah. At some point, you, you love your family, but that's one of the places where you definitely depart, is there was a time when they would make a breakfast and you'd think, this is a breakfast I would eat, and there's a time later on where you're like, mm -hmm. Christ, you guys drink way too much coffee. Oh, whatever. I always run into the opposite thing where it's like, oh, coffee no, in the morning? No. <laughs> would you like some, like... Uh water <laughs> from the hose on the side of the house oh that's great that or tomato juice and there's a banana but it's been here it would came with the house <laughs> it's not really a banana anymore i'm i look i like coffee but when my brother man i love my brother but that man there's just an ungodly amount of coffee going on <laughs> Yeah, see, my mom has coffee, but it, you can see through it. <laughs> it just looks like, you know, when you first turn on an old tap and that first water that comes out yeah. has a little color to it. Yeah. That's what her coffee looks like. <laughs> and then I say, why don't you make it stronger? And she's like, well, I don't like it that way. And I said, well, I'm here also. <laughs> so now there are two people <laughs> who have an opinion about the strength of the coffee. So what you could do is make it strong and then put a lot of milk in it and I can just drink it. <laughs> but if it's weak, there's nothing I can do. There's no fix in it. No. Yeah. And there is also it's Sierra Vista, Arizona. So if you want to go out for a cup of coffee, it's eight miles away. Now, has she got an auto drip machine? She has uh, now, thank the Lord, she has a Keurig. Oh, so you're good this time. At least it's semi, and even that is like a little weak, but at least she can't control <laughs> and make it weaker. Yeah. Oh, that's so um, great. But she can yell at me for pushing the wrong button. Um, for oh, I, We have to unplug it when we leave the house. Because you know how when you leave something plugged in, it bursts into flames as soon as you leave? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Appliances always catch fire if they know you're not there. Is she... Uh... Is this always been true or is this new? This is, I think, newish. Aha! Yeah. Your mother watches This Is Us. <laughs> There's a good chance. I guarantee. Oh, the crock pot. Yep. That's what happened. <laughs> I'll bet that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. For sure, because she's an older lady. She doesn't have a lot going on necessarily. She's not going to play tennis, probably. Nope. I'm not hooking up with young fellas or anything. She's a late lady. Well, we don't know. She could. Don't know. Her. Hey, let her be her. But, yep, but there's a lot of TV after the age of 80. Yeah. And it's much more serious. 
even a if it, of, yes and a lot of it is uh ways to die <laughs> yeah uh, this is what a lot of those shows should just be called ways to die oh, yeah um that you hadn't already thought of yeah or the thing is she she's always been a hypochondriac and i think she has so much hypochondria that it can't be contained in just health concerns right she's, like it's just a hypochondriac for the house now. Okay. The house I, might have something. I am going to solve a problem for you right now. So oh you're boy. You, you work on the Seth Meyers show, very funny show. Oh, thank you. You write a sketch and, uh, and in this sketch, it's supposedly it's inspired by real events. You're going to have to talk Seth into letting you do this, but it's all about how much cancer weak coffee causes <laughs> yeah solutions solutions bud and that's what we do here and the other thing i want to say before we move on is i'm in orange and you're in blue you look great thank you that's a good color for you it's a very good color i'm very yeah i'm happy about the color i i can't take any credit for it i just okay. put it on my body right did sue buy it for you no credit at all or did you buy it no, no, I bought it myself. I can, I can, yeah, I suppose. A little bit of credit. I'll take that credit. Because I did not buy this shirt for myself, so I can't take all the blame. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I look okay in this. It's just that I'm such a ruddy, red Irish dude. And then this just makes it look like both it's me and my thing. shirt have a sunburn. It's a little, it's a continuation of your face a little bit. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> it's like a, yeah, like a flesh colored band aid. <laughs> For your whole torso. <laughs> yeah. oh, tremendously, tremendously good song. You shared a bit of trivia with me last week, but that I knew, so it won't be this week's trivia. But um, what is the radio uh, time on this song? 3.05. 3.05. And that's one of those things I think Billy Joel does that he thinks is clever, is actually clever. Yeah, that's pretty clever. I think that's good. It's a reference to the lyrics, which we'll get in uh, shortly, uh, maybe even now, who knows. But <laughs> I like that he does that. And to, to put this issue to bed just real quick, it has a proper ending. Yeah. Yeah. Which is appropriate for a song called The Entertainer. Yep. Um, it's Because it, it is about performing live. Yeah. It's not really so much about... Uh, the radio play, although that does come up. It does come up, but you're absolutely right. And one of the lyrics references the fact that that's where they make their money, uh, which every band in the world knows that's true. It's why Billy Joel is probably making, well, not now because of the pandemic, but with the uh, Madison Square Garden uh, residency, was probably like making more money than he had in years. I'm sure. Without the trouble of recording. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Yeah. And I looked up his net worth today, just out of curiosity, uh, and who knows about accuracy on these things, but it's 225 million. I'm sure that that is accurate. I'm sure it is, and God bless. You know, and the other thing with a guy like Billy Joel, you know, we're fans of his, but here's the other thing that happens to some artists, and for sure it happened to Billy Joel. You go through a phase where people may think you're less relevant, but then some of the people who loved you so much as a child or whatever, become directors they start <laughs> making television yeah. and yeah. suddenly you're on a soundtrack i mean every every jj abrams movie makes the beastie boys rich <laughs> yeah and and unapologetically he will say that and there's you know you're billy joel there's an art you know there's a director out there who's like well, this is said in World War II, and I got this Billy Joel song, and you're like, what? You're like, well, I just like Billy Joel. Yeah, it, it works, trust me, it works. Um, have you seen The Boys? Oh, the superhero thing? Yeah. Um, I've watched a little bit of it. I don't think I like it. Do you like it? Um, I think it was fantastic. Okay, maybe I should try it again. Try it again. Uh, but the main character is a huge Billy Joel fan, and it's like a thing about him. Oh, funny. It okay. Recurs a lot, and he has a lot of concert t shirts. Oh, that's great. It's kind of not really used against him as much as I would have thought. <laughs> I think it's just supposed to make him seem very 
average. Yeah. Which is great. And is this the main guy who's incredibly strong and dangerous? No. This is like the main normal human. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this the isn't man. this isn't this universe's Superman who is no, no. awful. <laughs> <laughs> he's really awful and it's funny how awful he is yeah anyway I, watch the boys yeah watch the boys everybody that's why we brought you out and next episode <laughs> I have one more annoying thing to say which is a friend of mine said that we should call this the uh joel rogan experience <laughs> <laughs> if anybody if we we're looking for a title oh we're not but that's pretty great that's pretty great i could do it as an aka uh -huh. and then yeah yeah. Or just we can acknowledge your friends very fun. Yeah. Do that. And that's that's enough. Let's do that. As as we've often said, sometimes saying the idea out loud. I had this idea to do an improv show. This is my idea for an improv show. So I come out and imagine you're the audience and I go, all right, everybody, give me an occupation. Uh, me uh, plumber. Plumber. All right. I'm gonna go do that. And then I leave and the show's over. The best. <laughs> and uh, I kind of want to book a place and do it prank style and just record it and just let the recording go and see how long it is until the audience is pretty sure that I'm not coming back. <laughs> well, I feel like you just start with that and then you actually go to plumbing school. <laughs> right. And you shoot a documentary um, and you keep going until you're a certified plumber. And I come back and I go, all right, what do you guys need now? I need a suggestion. What do you need done in your house? Because <laughs> now I can do it. <laughs> and you just pray they don't say neurologist or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Neurologist. <laughs> right. It's right. been gone for 10 years. Yeah. Oh, we should do the song. Yeah, let's do it. I will start. And uh, this is nice, by the way. This is the lyrics are laid out in decent sized chunks for us to just dissect yes like four lines and then a bunch of chorus <laughs> or whatever a bunch of hooey um, so it has a big musical introduction and he begins with i am the entertainer and i know just where i stand another serenader and another long-haired band um i like that a lot uh it's uh re certainly references what everybody was expected to look like at the time for yeah. sure it's definitely of this era. It's of the 70s. <laughs> yeah. This is what dudes look like. And at some point, this is what dudes had to look like. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I also like that he immediately is like, I know where I stand. Yeah. I'm one of a million idiots like me in some long haired band. Yeah, it's brutally self aware. Uh, by the way, this is off of Street Life Serenade, 1974. Uh, uh, Today I am your champion. I may have won your hearts. And that's cool because right away, it's not even for a moment that he's enjoying being your champion. <laughs> I may have won your hearts. You don't even for, he doesn't say, uh, today I'm your champion. I won your hearts. He says, I may have won your hearts. It's already. <laughs> right. Self-doubting already. Already there's no joy in the fact that he has had done this. He <laughs> knows what's on the line. But I know the game. You'll forget my name. And I won't be here in another year if I don't stay on the charts. Oh. And uh, Lordy, and at that point in his career, that was 100% true. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think he, this whole album was like, all right, this is your, chance, your last chance to uh, get somewhere with this because Piano Man was a while ago now. Yep. We're starting to forget about you. Um, and uh, I love the inclusion of the word champion because it's very 70s. Yeah. Um, the younger kids probably only know champion in a sports context, but it was such a thing to be. <laughs> like, yeah. Dads call their kids champ. Yeah. It's one of those 70s song words, um, like girl or a cup of wine. Remember a lot of songs referenced a cup of wine right. for whatever reason, they didn't have glasses. Right. Um, I love it. 
I like, I sort of mentally collect words that are only in 70s songs. <laughs> like dandelion wine. Oh yeah, which. Well, there's a lot of wine. Dandelion wine's probably pretty gross too, right? I would think. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. I mean, it, it went away. Yeah. <laughs> but I know the game, you'll forget my name, and I won't be here in another year. And you know, it's funny too, a lot of his contemporaries from this era prove the accuracy of his songs. Oh, for sure. Even We're, like... There's Chili Whack now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so many dudes too, like, um, well, Gilbert, Earl, Gilbert, Gilbert O'Sullivan, great artist, but he stopped making things people cared about. And Everybody knows who Billy Joel is. I promise you they don't know who Gilbert O'Sullivan is. <laughs> yeah, I certainly don't. And they do you remember do you know his big hit? No. Alone uh, Again Naturally. Oh, great. Fantastic song. Yeah. But then that weird song, Claire, that he had to explain. Remember <laughs> Claire? Claire. It's familiar. Claire is about like his niece or something. Okay. And I think his intentions are nothing but pure. He's talking about how nice it is and she's beautiful and see her grow up. But it comes across a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, say no more. Yeah. And look <laughs> it up if you want to go, huh. <laughs> oh, I do want to. I do want to do that. Oh, well, look it up. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is uh, on to you. All right. I am the entertainer and I've had to pay my price. The things I did not know at first, I learned by doing twice. I always like <laughs> doing with a little apostrophe. Yep. Ah, but still they come to haunt me. Still they want their say. So I've learned to dance with a hand in my pants. I let them rub my neck and I write them a check and they go their merry way. Oh. There's a lot of frustration and, and feeling dirty in this lyric. This is pretty great. Yes, this is like, a, the fear is in the first verse and this is the like, I'm a whore. Yeah. I'm a I whore also, for a company and I know that. And I also like uh, the things I did not know at first, I learned by doing twice. It's an acknowledgement that, Man, I keep making the same stupid mistakes. And it could also be a little reference to him as far as him getting a handle on studio stuff, because this would be young in his recording life. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff. So what is haunting him? It's I think it's like the record company people. I think so too. Yeah. They're coming around to bother me because they still, they want their say. Yeah. They want to tell me how to do everything. Yeah. So I've learned to, da I've learned to dance with a hand in my pants. Like it's not natural to me. Nope. I would rather sit at the piano and sing my song, but they want me to put on a show. Yeah. Um, and then I love, <laughs> let them rub my neck because somebody made him change that. It was a hundred percent dick. Yeah. And they said, man, you're the piano man guy. You can't say dick. Yeah. And I believe 100% it's a reference, if not literally the exact thing, it's a reference to for sure some lady who's in charge of something that was real handsy. Entirely possible. I guarantee it. And the reason I know that is because I worked in a restaurant and that happened to me. <laughs> where the owner lady who was her her and her husband owned the place got real handsy with me off and on and I would tolerate it up until one point where I was like okay now <laughs> that, this is not gonna happen wow. and I was in a restaurant and I'm me <laughs> so it for sure happened to Billy Joel I'm sure uh yeah L lower stakes for sure yeah Oh, yeah. And uh, wasn't, by the way, not scarring. I don't say it like it was scarring. It was just like, why did that happen? Yeah, I don't need that. I I had a restaurant owner kept trying to get me to 
come to his house uh, to get in the hot tub with him and his wife. Whoa. That happened a lot. Yeah. How was it when you finally did it? Oh, my God. So good. <laughs> so relaxed. So relaxed. Turned out they were just nice people. <laughs> <laughs> then I uh, woke up on a futon in the desert. <laughs> Oh, that's I uh, woke up on a futon in the desert. That is a good name for an album. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so I let him rub my neck and I write him a check. I assume royalties. Yep. And then, and then they go away. Yeah, and there's definitely this like palpable bitterness about that check too. He's oh, like, for sure. This is ridiculous. I, the amount of money I give them for the amount of work I do. Right, and they are doing nothing. Yeah. Just haunting me. They are the gatekeepers. Yep. And by the way, may I say one of the things I'm enjoying most about the modern era is the eroding influence of the gatekeepers. I'm enjoying Yeah, it's really nice. The uh, There's so many escape routes. Yep. It's, and it's delightful to see them just clutch at that and hope, like, yeah. Yeah, you're going to keep being who you are, but now you're not much better than some booker who has six bar shows. Right. And if I really want to, I put it on the fucking internet by myself. Yeah. And charge everybody $5. And the next thing you know, I'm rich and you're not. So that's <sighs> great. That is really cool. The talent gets the money. Imagine such a thing. What a weird thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am the entertainer, been all around the world. I <laughs> like this next part. I've played all kinds of palaces, laid all kinds of girls. <laughs> I can't remember faces. I don't remember names. Ah, but what the hell, you know, it's just as well, because after a while and a thousand miles, it all becomes the same. Oh, it was all going so well for a minute there. Yep. Yeah, oh, palaces and girls traveling. Yep. And, uh, but it's all a blur. <laughs> yep. And hopefully, if you're a, if you're a person and you lived to a certain age, you've had this experience. Because I hope you have, because it's a nice experience. But boy, there does come a time when perfunctory sex uh, leaves a bigger hole than it fills. Yeah. And yeah. that's real tipping point. Huh? That's a real tipping point. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> the drugs it is. <laughs> yep. And the damn shame of it is there's a point just like drugs where it don't work anymore, but you're like, yeah, I'm still going to do it. I don't have a better idea. Yeah, boy. So I'm going to do it, but then I'm going to be a dick about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm That'll gonna... be fun for everyone involved. <laughs> really. oh, yeah. I, yeah, it's so great, too, because you're right. He's like, palaces. I also like, it's a reference to playing palaces, which hypothetically is classy, but it's contextualized. For sure, it's not. It's just a thing you did. Yeah, and it's just a name a lot of people gave to music venues. <laughs> that yeah. Were probably real shitty yep one especially like if you played at one i remember i did this i played at one that at one point had been a big deal in the 40s oh yeah and it was beautiful it was absolutely beautiful there were things about it that i just never got over as far as like well that's just lovely that part is neat and oh they didn't understand about acoustics back then did they <laughs> right there's all that curtains aren't helping me out yeah but there yeah but yeah you're right you you hit it right away it's just so funny how it's all this nice stuff but who cares it right. all leads together i can't even enjoy it yeah i do love that every verse is a different flavor of complaint <laughs> first he was scared then he was grossed out by the money thing now he's jaded yeah What's happening next? <laughs> I am the entertainer. I bring to you my songs. I'd like to spend a day or two, but I can't stay that long. No, I've got to meet expenses. I've got to stay in line. 
got to get those fees to the agencies and I'd love to stay, but there's bills to pay. So I just don't have the time. That's great. That yeah. is a great, uh, a, a less common complaint. There's a lot of these songs where it's like, it's hard being on the road, everybody. And you're like, oh yeah, cool rock and roll guy. Uh, <laughs> but you, you rarely hear the complaint like, I don't get to stay anywhere for any period of time. Yeah. I, I have to leave. And what a ridiculously valid complaint to anybody who's ever entertained in places on a trip because you might be in a cool place and there's a lot of cool things you could do. You're not doing them because there's no time to do them. Yes. You're getting up for breakfast, you, you know, it, hopefully later in the day. At least do that as an entertainer, by the way. If you want to go into entertainment, the key is to enjoy waking up at one. So, yeah, I love that part of it. I, I've <laughs> never not loved that. Yeah, it's very good. I've never not loved waking up at noon and going, I'm not done sleeping yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I can. Yeah, yeah I've, had, I've had like a version of this phenomenon where like I've had several occasions where I've gotten to go to LA for something to like work on an award show, very glamorous. Uh, but you're there for eight or 10 days and I have a lot of friends in LA and I cannot see them Yeah, because I'm in the basement of a venue with a laptop and bad Wi-Fi, trying to think of what might be funny a week and a half from now. Right. And it's like sunny up there. There's a beach. But it's like, yeah, no, you, you can't, you're not here. You're not really here. Yeah. And add in the fact that the, what you're doing is you're writing jokes so that some other people can really have an amazing night after they tell them. Right. And and you'll get the level of joy you'll get is the level of joy you get. But those people are going to go to parties where. Uh, the, yeah. Or we'll go to the same party, but they'll go to the better part of the party. Yeah. yeah. I have to stay in the front part of the party. <laughs> yeah. Explaining over and over again why I'm at the party. Yeah, for sure. And definitely that some of those people, I don't know, this bothers me. And maybe it's one of the reasons I don't exactly do what you do because you're going to hear people get, get told how funny they are <laughs> telling the jokes you wrote. Oh, I, I love that. Oh, good. Okay. Because yeah. you know. I, I mean. Yeah. I guess yeah. that was the gig. Yeah. It just sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, but I, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> right, me, damn it. Yeah, no, I, well, I've always thrived on not being the guy telling the joke. <laughs> like, that's the thing I'm less good at. That's funny. Yeah. I'm that's, good at typing it and printing it out. And letting you do the not sweating and getting nervous saying it. Yeah, you're, exactly. Yeah. I'd love to stay, but there's bills to pay. Ah, that's so great. It's like, yeah, I would enjoy this, but I got to get to that next gig gotta get paid there i gotta get paid at enough gigs to cover the just the stupid cost of traveling you know and i probably I don't get to stop like some of these tours go on for a year and a half or two years yeah where you don't get to sit down <laughs> yeah. um, you're lucky there's a couple days off you know in june you were off for a couple days and oh that was nice and but that's it right but um, we were in omaha <laughs> So I am the entertainer. I come to do my show. You heard my latest record. It's been on the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me years to write it. They were the best years of my life. I really like this lyric. It took me years to write it. They were the best years of my life. It was a beautiful song, but it ran too long. If you're going to have a hit, you got to make it fit. So they cut it down to 305. Great. I like that a lot. Really great so many you know obviously there's not every song is a labor of love because i've heard a lot of his songs it couldn't be <laughs> but some of them are some of them are there some of them are the thing that you just oh, sure. you you know um i think when he wrote don't go changing was about a specific woman and he was you know that's not the name of the song is it what is it 
Just the way you are. Just the way you are. Okay. I always call it. <laughs> anyway, Just the Way You Are is a beautiful song. And it seems to me so very much about a specific lady. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think it was about his wife. Um, and sure, it didn't stick. But my buzz like Paul McCartney, We Can Work It Out. Beautiful song written about a very specific, beautiful lady. And it wasn't true. We couldn't work it out. But... <laughs> But that process to write this wonderful thing and then have some dummy go, well, okay, but do you really need this part that matters to you? Because <laughs> <laughs> we got to get it on the radio. Yeah. Um, it's really great. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think he's thinking of a specific song. Yeah. But I, wa I, I wonder if he's ever been asked about that. I'll bet not. Hey, can you pause the recording? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Can I? I don't know. I hope so. Um, or can you only stop it? I can only stop it. Okay. Well, I'm going to go pee. I'll go. I'm dying over here. Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. You talk. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's good to see you. <laughs> um, I think uh, he's going to like this uh, picture back here. So I got a picture of it references something we've talked about before. So when we get on to that part of the show, that'll be the thing we do. Um, I do not have to pee, Alex does, but it's weird that there's ever a time when I don't have to pee. So that's kind of nice because I'm a man in my 50s and uh, I'm discovering that that's kind of all we do is uh, get up in the middle of the night three or four times and then uh, talk about Billy Joel. That's about all we do. Um, if anybody was curious, um, uh, oh, here's a joke I wrote. Uh, in <laughs> this here's a joke I wrote. Uh, in Wisconsin, Wisconsin's a pretty unhealthy state. Even the urinal cakes will give you diabetes. That's a joke I wrote. I like it. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to do this new thing where I stay hydrated, and this is the side effect is I have to pee 44 times a day. <laughs> um, Probably fine. I mentioned to our listeners that that's all you do in your 50s. Yeah. Yeah. All you do is pee and fall asleep during movies. Yeah. I, uh, maybe I mentioned this. Ain't bad. It's all right. Yeah, it is. I, I think I mentioned to you my taste in movies hasn't changed other than I'm real keen to find out the runtime. <laughs> yes. That's a yeah. part of it. Yeah. And you better have something to say if you're going over 215. Yeah. Because I'm going to be looking for a walk-in scene where I'm like, I don't need to watch people walk. I'll go pee during that part. <laughs> that does not matter. There ought to be an app. There is a, I started a, another show. I've only done one episode it, and it's called When to Pee. Oh. A movie review show. The best. Yeah. Crucial. Like a lot of things I've done. <laughs> one episode. <laughs> <laughs> but this, 27. Hell yeah, because I got oh, yeah. a commitment from a friend. It makes it easier when you're doing it with somebody. Yeah. yeah. But you got to make it fit. So they cut it down to 305. And as we mentioned, the radio edit of this is 305. Yep. A funny thing to do. A very funny, great joke. Yeah. And probably made it nice for the guys at the, uh, you know, who worked for the, uh, the record label because they could go no no you wanted it this time <laughs> you were very clear in the song this was not our fault this time we we loved the long version really no 305 no, no this is good <laughs> uh i am the entertainer the idol of my age i make all kinds of money when i go on the stage ah you've seen me in the papers I've been in the magazines, but if I go cold, I won't get sold. I'll get put in the back in the discount rack like another can of beans. Great. Now, first, I want to say I love the way he says the word money in this. <laughs> I wake all kinds of money. He says that kind of, yeah, and okay. I love it. There's a <laughs> lot of dripping you know, yeah, how great, I got so much money, but listen to this. <laughs> that, that part is tremendous. I also like idol of my age. Yeah. It's an acknowledgement of a truth that he lives with even today. 
Yes. You know, I also like this whole song is uh, about him and his personal experiences, but it's also he's sort of singing it through every entertainer. Yes. Um, he's not saying like, I am the entertainer. He's saying like, I am, my character is the entertainer. Yeah. So it's me, but it's also, it's David Bowie or Elton John or Chili Whack. Everyone is dealing with the same things. Um, which is why there's like, the, the detail of uh, having a hit and cutting it to 305 seems a little specific to him, yeah. but true of everyone. Absolutely. Um, so I feel like he's like, I'm going to speak for everybody, which is also very much like him. Yeah, you know what? It, well, and you know, it's funny. You take a group like the Beatles again, couldn't be a bigger band. They still had to fight to get bigger, so longer songs released. Always getting like with the record was company. Given. They fucking started their own record company so they wouldn't have to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. And immediately broke up, which I always thought, ah, that sucks. Or we should have started sooner or something because we never <laughs> got to benefit from this. And you know, you said a funny thing just now that dawned on me is true. So he's singing as a character. Yeah. And then Billy Joel is the character. Because yeah. That's what it is to be an entertainer. You know, you go see a particular guy, you go see Jim Gaffigan, you go see um, Lord. You don't get to see Lord. You get to see the character Lord. Right. That ain't her. It's maybe it's almost her. Yeah, some closer than others, but yeah. Uh, if you go see Billy Joel, he, uh, you know, certain songs, he's standing up with the microphone and twirling it around. He doesn't want to do that. He's 75. <laughs> he's right. to sit at the piano and sing. Yeah. And even at that age, with $200 million in the bank, someone is saying to him, like, you can't, it's got to be a show, Bill. Yeah. Billy, will you killing me? You're sitting at the piano the whole time? Can it rotate? Can we put it on a platform at least? <laughs> he doesn't want that either, but he's like, oh, fine. Just give me my check. Yeah, and put there, back in my helicopter at the end of the night. Is there a hollow microphone stand that's lighter? You have that now? Is that a thing? Uh, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I also like um, get put in the back in the discount rack, not just in the discount rack, the back of it. Yep. Um, which we, us people who are, uh, were poor for a long time, uh, are very familiar with because we would go to buy music and the new album uh, back in those days was nine ninety nine. Yeah, and that was too much. So we would look for the stuff with the nice price. Remember that? That's right. A little sticker that said the nice price four ninety nine. Yeah. And we're like, oh fuck, I can get this. I can get this Chili Wax Greatest Hits. That they have 40 right copies it. of. They have 40 copies of, yeah. That's, this is how I found, irony of ironies, this song, because I went to albums across the street from the U of A, where they had a discount rack. So you go through there, and I saw the top of a thing that said, the songs of Billy Joel. And I was like, oh, I know that guy. And I pulled it out, but it was a band called Mirror Image that just did impressions of <laughs> your favorite artists. <laughs> so it was not him. It was just his songs. And uh, this was, you know, very early 80s. So like, it was only his old stuff sung by a different band. And the fact that the entertainer, a non-hit was on it this is very telling. Weird, yeah. Uh, but they did a very good version of it. And I thought, oh, I like this Billy Joel song. <laughs> so I found this song in the back of the discount rack. And you got a can of beans and you had dinner. I did. Um, when I used to watch Bo Bosom Buddies, you remember the show Bo Bosom Buddies with uh, Peter Squarry and Tom Hanks? Yeah. Uh, the theme song is a Billy Joel song. And I didn't know for the longest that it was a sound-alike guy. I think I didn't know that as well. It was a very good sound-alike. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. I knew I I think I was familiar with that show before I knew what Billy Joel was. Oh, really? That's funny. Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, uh, this, I was like, oh, this TV theme song is a, a hit song from the radio, but that's all I knew. That's funny. And, and now it, here's the thing. At the time, I didn't know it. I've recently heard the theme song within the context of a funny thing that was on Adult Swim, which you may hmm. remember the greatest television event in history. You've heard of it, right? I've never seen that, but yeah, I've heard of it. And one of the bits they did is they got Billy Joel to re-record the song. And he goes, and he was very funny. He said, one of the gaps in my career has always been that I didn't actually get to do the song on Bosom Butler. <laughs> so great. And then they kept correcting him. And he goes, no, no, it's not like that. You gotta, can you sound more like the guy who did it for the show is what they said. Very funny. That's great. But in rehearing it, I'm like, oh, I know, I can tell the difference now. So now, just now, knowing sure. who he is more now, I can, but yeah, at the time I was like, oh, that's Billy Joel. No, it isn't. Yeah, like, oh, maybe they just cleaned it up a little bit. Yeah. Just, you know, like in the fucking lab. Yeah. I am the entertainer and I know just where I stand. Another serenader and another long haired band. Today I am your champion. I may have won your hearts, but I know the game. You'll forget my name. I won't be here in another year. If I don't stay on the charts, which I believe is just absolutely identical to the first one, right? Uh, yes. Uh, and in this song, I think that works. But you don't have a chorus, so you don't have that thing. It is, here's the situation, the, the first lyric, <laughs> right? And then here's what that experience is. So just to reiterate, I know what's up. I know who I am. I know where I stand. I like it because the first time you hear it, it's very generalized. It feels very generalized. And then there's five more verses of very specific complaints and problems <laughs> with yeah. it. So the second time you hear it, it feels different. Yeah. It feels weightier. It feels more desperate. Yeah. For the first time you hear it, it's just like an awareness of like, this could possibly not work out. Yeah. Um, but the second time you hear it, I feel like what he's saying is like, even if this does work out, it's kind of a drag. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a no win for me. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, it also means it's sick. It makes it cyclical, which is even a bigger bummer because you're like, so all that shit I had to do, well, I'm going to go do that again. Get yeah. back on the road. I made another album. They messed around with another song that I really like. Hopefully you like this one, because if you don't, that could be it. And I'm constantly living under the fear that that's it. I also like to think of it as the second time we hear the same exact verse, he's starting the song in a different city. Oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, another audience. All right, I got to tell them all the stuff. <laughs> and it just it just keeps going. Uh, hopefully I will lay some kind of girls because that distracts <laughs> me a little bit. Here at the Omaha Corn Palace. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, that's fantastic. It's, it's a thing too. There's not, there's a, there ain't no fat in here, I don't think. No, I mean, there's a little redundancy here and there, but it is that there's useless redundancy and then there's useful repetition yeah I, mean, I think this is more of that useful like the song is about how repetitive his life is yeah i think it's helpful that it's like hammering the same points like yeah. if you don't like these fucking songs i'm boned <laughs> i'm gonna tell you again with slightly different words yep absolutely you feel the weight of everything i feel yeah uh, it's yeah, it's really nicely done, and it's it's very funny how um, the music could throw you off because the music is so whimsical. Yeah, there's nothing that makes you think in the music. Yeah, um, except oh. there's one, there's one little piano riff that uh, you hear almost identically in "Good Night Saigon." <laughs> so listen for that. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a little moment where you're like, oh, good night, Saigon? Oh, uh, no, 
Well, you know, and it, there is, by the way, there's no middle weird bridge. No bridge. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just chugging. Yeah. Which I think tells me he understood exactly the story he was trying to tell today because it wouldn't work. Like if there was like, but sometimes it's fun and you'll never do that. <laughs> right. Like, no, that's, it's not. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. It's a really great song. Yeah. And it's, I think, 338 or something on the album. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what they cut. But, <laughs> well, uh, I, but would, I know you. imagine more than likely what they cut was just because uh, at the very end it goes, there's a there's oh, a, okay. so there the part where it seems like it's over and then it does a little bit more which i really like actually yeah. quite well yeah so that would have been the easiest thing to cut and maybe even intentionally like i got this thing that you can cut because i want this to be the thing because <laughs> i know you know what that is that's uh at our show we call it the rusty clock our set designer told us this story, like working with certain producers, they would come down and look at the set she had designed and they'd always want to remove one or two things so that they could say like, I fixed it. So she had an old rusty clock that she would always put in the set somewhere and it looked bad. And so the producer would come by and go, all right, the living room looks good. Uh, let's get rid of the clock. And she'd go, oh, OK. And, and then they would leave her alone. So I, I think like that little bridgey bridge sound at the end was like his, his rusty clock. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a good tip for like if, if you're writing, put in a couple of paragraphs that you don't want. Because an editor, what an editor has to get rid of something, or yeah. they have no reason to get paid. Right. So put in something shitty, <laughs> and they'll go, "This is all great, but I don't like this." And you go, "Oh, well, fine, I'll cut it." Yeah, I really like that part, but you, you know, you know, you're a good observation. Yeah, sure. that's why you get the big bucks. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. We have a different philosophy with our show. I say we put in all kinds of stuff. And I make yeah. Fun. <laughs> oh, this is the fucking rusty clock hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for other names. Uh, the rusty clock hour. That is actually a good name. God, that's a good name. Not terrible, right? You have to know the story, but then it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, there's a gentleman behind me. Now, I don't know if you intentionally cut off part of this gentleman's face. Um, it's not entirely. No, it wasn't intentional. In my frame, but I think it's Lawrence O'Donnell. It sure is. From MSNBC. Yep. He's on in the 10 o'clock hour. Yeah. Right after Rachel Maddow. Yeah, he is the host of a show. Um, oh, why can't I? It's uh, yeah. all, all in with Chris Hayes. Then it's uh, the Rachel Maddow show. Yeah. And then Lawrence O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah. And he's on after those guys, right? He's on after those guys. After after that's hours. A good, that's a tint to the name of the show, at least. So the show, they got they gotta tell you what they gotta tell you. The next show is gonna tell you what they're gonna tell you. And then yeah, he comes, comes up. Yeah, after Rachel. Is it after Rachel? Is that the name of the show? Almost. It's it definitely comes on after the end of of Rachel for sure. Funny, I end up watching the first ten minutes of it every night, and then I get tired of how smug and gross he is. <laughs> uh, he not is, after no, hours. He is smug, isn't he? He is smug, and He's the like, kind of guy. He is the kind of guy who would name a show this. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, like, um, so Rachel told you what she had to tell you. Sure. But now. Now it's uh, Larry's turn. I'm going to give you. My two cents. You don't even need to listen to anybody else. 
Just Larry. <laughs> I can't think of it. <laughs> that one guy was on first. She's on what? Second? Uh-huh. And he's on third? He is on third. Is there a, there's not one after it though, right? There not is. There. <laughs> there's not another like talkie guy afterwards, is there? I don't think there right is. Williams is after that. But that's just regular news, right? Yeah. Yeah, the as far as the talkie shows, there's not one after him. Their final thoughts or something. Yeah, it's kind of like final that's thoughts. The last word. Yeah. The last word. Yeah. Which is uh, in the dictionary would be like Zyzax. It is the name of the show is the last word. The last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Yep. The last word. And the last word. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait till you get it. <laughs> uh, let's see. The last word. Last night. <laughs> you dickhead. <laughs> You had to have the last word last night. <laughs> last, your shot. Yeah. Last week you go. I'm always thinking it's gonna be big shot. It was like I'm gonna make a big shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is so dumb. Right. <laughs> oh, the last word last night. I should have gotten it immediately if I had ever paid attention to the name of his goddamn show. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't blame you for not, but it's so funny to me. Uh, funny. The first picture I had, I liked was more in centered, but it, <laughs> but, it, but it had the logo of the network. And also I realized in the background in like sort of uh, faded letters, cause that's the style. Uh -huh. The last word. I was like, well, it can't be that picture. That's not. No, you can't. <laughs> That's a little too much. Even I could have gotten that. <laughs> um, I do love that you cut him off in such a way that all I can see is his fucking smirk. <laughs> and you can't. It's absolutely Lawrence O'Donnell. And all I, all I can see is his nose and mouth. Yeah, his defining characteristic, the smirk. I have said to people like, he starts, it, it's like he starts every episode going, well, well, well. <laughs> Fucking dickhead. First of all, it's not news because we just watched two hours before you. So whatever you got to well, well, well about, Rachel already explained it to me. Yeah. And she's charming. She's charming and she's very good. And it, it's a well-written segment that starts with like a weird historical thing. And then she puts context in it. Yeah. And then Lawrence comes out and goes, mm, thank you, Rachel. I've got this. Uh, <laughs> like, Fuck you. Uh, it is very funny that it's called The Last Word then. It is, especially since there's a show after it. That's got to be, that's, it, he thought of that title for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or somebody sarcastically gave it to him. Yeah. Like, you know what you ought to call it? The last word. And he overheard it. And he's like, you're right, because I'm on to something. He's like, no, okay. Ooh, he's doing it, you guys. <laughs> he believed us. This is great. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Oh. You got some trivia for me? Do you know what a Billy Joel's first number one song was? I'm gonna guess it wasn't Piano Man. And so no. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say just the way you are. Topped out at number three. Oh. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me guess again now. It'll be amazing if it's Big Shot, but it's not Big Shot. That would be incredible. <laughs> that would be absolutely incredible. Uh, still rock and roll to me. Still rock and roll to me. Yeah, okay. Not until 1981 did he have a number one song. Oh man, that's that's almost a trick question, and that's great because he'd had a number of perfectly successful hits with yep. the top five. Yeah. Oh yeah. Never cracked it until that song. 
and what a banger it's a good song and i wonder i wonder if it's if it's because it's a it's stylistically different so he made a shift from his earlier stuff yeah uh it's not it's a little bit new wave which is what he's responding to yeah and which he just has that baseline yeah yeah it, it's a the such a good song as I've mentioned before. The Chipmunks covered it. <laughs> yes, I've I listened to your other podcast. Right, <laughs> Jim analyzes Chipmunk songs. Yeah, you don't I, have a co-host for that. That's weird that you couldn't yeah. find someone. It's been hard to sell anybody on it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. I like too that in my in the way the show works is I insist they wrote the songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's more fun that way. Yeah. Who yeah. else can write for those voices though? Very true. Very true. That show we just did episode uh, thirty eight. So oh, going for yeah. a while. Yeah. I guess it's easier when you don't have to coordinate schedules. Yeah, and uh, the catalog and the the richness of what you're breaking down. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I used to, man, it's so funny to me because we both have a similar story. Both of us, our first Billy Joel sort of album didn't include Billy Joel, which is very funny. Yeah, very weird. We all is, backed into it. I think mine is worse than you, worse or more magical than yours because mine is the Chipmunks. <laughs> and mine was Mirror Image. Yeah. And for what it's worth, the Chipmunks, as far as I can tell, they're still recording. They're still doing stuff. I think so. Do you think it's the original members? Here's my... So if you're a fan of the Chipmunks, and a lot of you, I'm sure, are, I I want to let you believe they're still together, but the lifespan of a Chipmunk oh. makes me not optimistic. And I don't want to bum you out, but but like it's worse than Lassies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chipmunks... You know, you're you're looking at five years, six years, maybe. Maybe if there are no hawks around. That is an old chipmunk. Uh, I'll share with you a quick story about my dog Tinkerbell and a uh, squirrel. Uh, dogs like to chase squirrels, as you know, and my True. I would let my dog do that, but she's on a leash because the squirrels are smart. They go up a tree, <laughs> and it's fine. And one day. <laughs> she decides to chase the squirrel and i don't know if the squirrel was reading the newspaper or had just gotten bad news at home that you know was just heard that like there it was getting divorced but this squirrel was distracted in a way i've never seen a squirrel before ran <laughs> up my tinkerbell grabbed the squirrel by the tail and went Rrr! it flipped oh. over in the air landed oh. and went ah! <laughs> And it, was, and it was fine. And it was like, oh, you're not supposed to be able to catch those. <laughs> Squirrel's perfectly fine. I saw it up on the tree, just like, uh, and oh boy, I hope there's a squirrel language so that it can go. I got to tell you what just happened to me because it was so funny. First the divorce, now this. <laughs> oh, I stopped letting her do that after that because I was like, you got lucky, Tink, because you got you got satisfaction, but that thing's got claws. Right. And God knows what else. Yes, absolutely. Lawyers. <laughs> ah, there's no collar for that. <laughs> I like that word. Okay, good. I like your laugh, by the way. You have a good laugh. A good ah, laugh. you're nice. Nice person laugh. Um, have you picked uh, this I song? found a very good song. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, it also on the Glass Houses LP. Okay. Uh, sleeping with the television on. Awesome. So underrated. It really super jams. That's fantastic. I like that song. Yeah. And does that that song too kind of feels of its era, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it has a cool <laughs> sound effect. 
Uh, it has a lot of the things, but uh, it's a really great song. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah. We'll talk about that. We like rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do, right? When yeah. you like rock and roll? I think uh, years ago I explained how this symbol works, right? It's, it's, it's I love the devil. Oh, I love the devil. Nice. Yeah. But hey, love is love. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Don't judge me. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, folks. I'm really pleased uh, that we're still doing this and that uh, some of you are still listening. Um, <laughs> Amazing. Greatly appreciate that. I'm going to stop the recording, but not in the thing so we can say goodnight properly. Oh. Sometimes I do the other thing because I forget things. <laughs> <laughs>